So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this Key Stage 3 GCSE video we'll be taking a look at the more basic concepts of the rules of indices. Now this video is included on both the higher and the foundation um, syllabus of GCSEs and in the next video we'll be focusing on more the higher rules of indices. Now an index or power represents the number of times a base number is multiplied by itself. So for example here you may call it the big number, you may call it its proper name by its base which represents the 3. And then the index or the power which is more commonly known as is the number that, that's just on the top right hand corner of the number and what that then represents is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 so we've got four threes being multiplied together. Now in terms of using a calculator because obviously raising numbers to a certain power is quite common that here you may find on your calculator you've got x squared button which basically squares your number so it automatically puts that little 2 in the top right hand corner you can have an x3 some calculator which cubes a number and then you've got the universal buttons now on your calculator you will only have one of these three universal sort of power buttons and these allow you to enter a base number to whatever power you want whether it be a positive number a negative number or even a fraction or a combination of the two so these are our universal power buttons or index buttons and that allows you to enter it now with some calculators you may need to enter the base number first and then press one of these buttons with some calculators uh, you may have to press the button first and then fill in the gaps with wherever you need it but again it's always important to locate these buttons on your scientific calculator so there are some rules of indices that allow us to simplify expressions so the first rule we're going to look at is multiplying bases now again these rules only apply when the base numbers are the same if your base numbers are different these rules won't work so for example if I had 3 squared times 2 to the power of 4 then there is no rule that works for this likewise for adding or subtracting these base numbers need to be the same in order for any of these rules to work so let's have a look at the first one so what I do is just explain how the first rule of multiplying bases works so for example if I had a cubed which means a times a times a and then I had a to the power of 5 which let's just stick a multiplication there and we've got a to the power of 5 so here we've got a times a times a times a times a and how many a's do we all have together well that's going to be a to the power of 8 if I had t to the power of 4 well that would be t times t times t times t multiplied by t squared so that's t times t then how many t's am I multiplying all together well that's going to be t to the power of 6 and then for the last one here we've got 9 so that's 9 being multiplied by 9 cubed which is 9 times 9 times 9 and how many nines am I multiplying all together well I'm doing 4 of them so it's 9 to the power of 4 so what you should spot is that is there a pattern that links these number these powers or these indices which is a 1 to our final power that we've got in our answer and the fact is that yes there is because in order to get the final answer power I don't need to do any of this we can actually if you imagine if you had a to the power of 16 times a to the power of 31 it's going to take you ages to write down all those a's so in terms of the first rule the first rule is I hope you would have spotted it to get to the final answer what we do when we're multiplying is we add the powers so here a to the power of b times a to the power of c equals a to the power of b plus c and that there is our first rule of indices so now let's have a look at dividing bases now when it comes to division obviously incorporates the rules of algebra in the fact that we don't use the division symbol because well in some cases we don't use algebra in this it's obviously it does have some subtle links and um, so that you can see some division symbols in these questions when you are asked to divide but let's have a look at what these questions actually mean so here we've got x to the power of 4 so that's 4 x's being multiplied together over and then I've got 2x squared which is 2x's now from this what I can then do is cancel because I've got x's being multiplied at the top and bottom I can cancel them out so 1 here 1 here 
one here, one here. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with x squared. Similarly for the next one, so here I've got b to the power of 7, so I've got b times b times b times b times b times b times b. Just double check I've got 7 of them. Yes, I have. All divided by b cubed. So 3 b to the bottom. Then again, I can start cancelling them out. So 1 from there, 1 from the top, 1 from the bottom, until one side has got none left. So here I've got final answer of b cubed will be to the power of 4, because I've gone a bit crazy with of those let's just put that b back and then find it for using numbers again i've got the division so again i'm going to have got two fives at the top over and this is the same as five squared over five to the power six and then i've got six fives at the bottom and again i'm just going to cancel these ones out so here I've got one from there, one from there, one from there, one from there. So what have I got left? Well, I've got one over five to the power of four. And there'll be we'll look at when we look at these in due course. So in terms of dividing bases, is there a shorter way of looking at these powers and getting our final answer of our power well yes there is so the next one is a to the power of b divided by a to the power of c equals a to the power of b minus c or if you want to write it as a b over a c equals a b minus c so when we're dividing the base is the same what do we do to the powers well we simply subtract them now again i'll come back to this one in due course when we start looking at uh, negative powers so let's have a look at our third rule. So this is when we are looking at brackets. So what do brackets mean? Well, for example, two squared means two times two. Three squared means three times three. If I had two squared to the power of three, then that means I've got three lots of two squared, like so. So let's have a look at expanding these out. So from this, I've got four lots of b cubed, so that's one, two, three, four, and I'm multiplying. And again, looking at that first rule, what do I do to the powers? When I'm multiplying and the base is the same, well, I simply add the powers, so that's going to be b to the power of 12. Here, I've got three x squared. And again, incorporating the first rule of indices, when I'm multiplying base the same, I add the powers, so that's going to be b to the power of 6. Dealing with numbers, again, as I've said, 3 squared times 3 squared is going to give me 3 to the power of 4. So when we have brackets, hopefully you've already spotted what we do when we've got brackets, and how we get that final power is that we multiply out the powers. So when we've got, so here, our third rule is a to the power of b to the power of c equals a, b, c. So in other words, here we multiply the powers. And that's our third rule. Now, one thing you do need to be very, very careful of is when you have got numbers and letters or a combination of numbers and letters or letters and letters inside a bracket. So for example, if I had 2x to the power of 3, then what I would have to do is not only would I need to raise the x to power 3, I also need to do the 2 as well. So that's going to be 2 cubed times x cubed, which is going to give me 8x cubed. So the answer is not 2x cubed. If I then stuck, let's say, a power in the x, so for example, if I had 3x squared to the power of 3, then that would be 3 cubed times, and then this is where I apply the bracket rule of where I multiply out the powers when I've got there so that's going to be 3x to the power of 6 that's my x so 3 times x to the power of 6 3 cubed is 27 and then x to the power of 6 is my final answer so if I then had let's say b to the power of a cubed and let's stick a squared on the b to the power of 4 then that would mean I'm going to have to do b to the power of 2 times 4 times a to the power of 3 times 4. So again, if there's already a power, you also then need to multiply. But also, if there is a letter or a number, then we still need to do the same. So this final answer would be b to the power of 8, a to the power of 12. 
So just be mindful of that because again, a lot of students do make a mistake, particularly when they're dealing with numbers. So for example, if I had two, 7x to the power of 5 to the power of 2, then that would be 49x to the power of 10. So again, can be done very, very quickly. You don't need to show much working out, but just remember that if there is a number or something else in the bracket, you also then need to raise it by the power as well. Now moving on over to rule four, five, and six, it can be better explained if we look at this kind of like number line. So here I'm gonna go through what the powers of one mean, what the powers of zero mean, and what negative powers mean. Now in this particular grid, what we've got, let's just fill in the gaps of what we do know. So we know that two squared is two times two, which is four. Two times two, well times that by two, we get eight. And two times two times two times two gives me 16. Now what I'm doing from each, from here to here, is I'm multiplying by the base number, which in this case is two. So now to go in the opposite direction, so to get from this to this, I'm gonna do the opposite, which is to divide by two. So when we've got two to the power one, that's gonna be four divided by two, which is gonna be two. Then I'm gonna do two divided by two, which is one. Then I'm gonna do two divided by one, uh, one divided by two, which is a half. Then I'm going to divide that by, uh, by 2. And the reason why I'm dividing by 2 is because the base number is 2. So that's going to be a quarter. That then is going to be an eighth. And that there is going to be a sixteenth. Now one thing hopefully you may be able to spot if I continue this. Is the denominator. Now with negative powers all of these are 1 over. And that's basically what the negative power does. It basically includes the reciprocal of each of those numbers. And however, if I look at the actual base of this, so for example, one has two, the two has a four, the three has the eight, and the four has the 16. So basically, when I've got negative power, it basically means one over, and then you do the respective positive power with the base number. Now, in terms of two to the power one, that's always gonna be dividing by itself. So here, let me just, have a look so we can prove this by looking at threes so here if I look at 3 squared which is 9 times that by 3 is 27 times that by 1 is 81 so now dividing that by 3 I get 3 dividing that by 3 I get 1 divide that by 3 I get a third divide that by 3 I get a ninth now because 3 cubed is 1 over 27 I mean sorry 27 then this 3 to the power of minus 3 is going to be 1 over 27 if 3 to the power of 4 is 81, then 3 to the power of minus 4 is going to be 3 to the power of 81. Now, in terms of similarities between these two things, as you can see that when you've got to the power of 1, let me just slowly move it up so we can see both, so we should bring these two things closer. So when we've got 2 to the power of 0 and 3 to the power of 0, notice how both answers are just simply 1. And when we're doing 2 to the power of 1, notice how the answer is just the base number. So here, in terms of recognizing the rules, anything to the power of 0 is, let me just write this down, so anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, always. So anything to the power of 0, so minus 3 to the power of 0, 1. Minus 5 to the power of 0, 1. 10 million to the power of 0, 1. 3.26 to the power of 0, 1. Anything to the power of 0 is always 1. Now, anything to the power of 1 is always the base number. So it's always going to be itself. So a to the power of 1 is just going to be a. So 3 to the power of 1 is uh, 3. 7 to the power of 1 is 7. Minus 6 to the power of 1 is minus 6. 3 million to the power of 1 is going to be 3 million. So anything to the power of, zero, uh, power of 1 is going to be the base number. It's always itself. So in other words, let's just write itself. Now a minus power, well here again, the minus just means the reciprocal. It just makes it 1 over. So here it's going to be 1 over a to the power of b. So the negative equals 1 over and that's what it does so the negative power just means the reciprocal is what we tend to call it more mathematically 
So for example, if I had, um, let's say, 7 to the power of minus 2, well, that's just going to be 1 over 7 squared. And then if I can simplify it, which I can, I'd write 1 over 49.